Hello, film fans. Welcome to the Film vs. Film podcast. My name is Martin Harries, your host, and I'm joined by the film encyclopedia man, Boaz Dix. We are a couple of filmmakers on occasion, but mainly can't stop yapping about movies. On this podcast, every episode we pick a topic from a film that's coming out at the cinema or on VOD. Myself and Boaz pick our favourite film from that topic, or team up against a guest and battle it out to decide which film will become the greatest film of all time. If you enjoy this podcast, please leave us a five-star review and subscribe. Please enjoy part two. Hello, welcome guys again. Still got Scott and Shelley with me, the film obsessed couple. And as you know by now, I start part two with your Instagram responses from our last episode, which was weird films relating that episode to poor things, which will be out in December. The Matt and Mark movie show went with being John Malkovich. Uh, the movie Boners went with Tusk. And Sam from One of Us is Bored went with Help, I'm a Fish. <laughs> Not heard of that one, but... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, some interesting choices there. Uh, I'm curious, guys, what would be your weird movie choice? I think I can pick for both of us. Mm-hmm. Society? <laughs> right. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, what were you going to pick then? No, I have no idea. <laughs> oh, um, Society. We did that movie on the right. podcast. It's uh, not to ruin it. And we probably did this last time too, but it has such a wild ending that you just don't see coming out of anywhere. And it, it is insane. I highly recommend it. You, you probably still would have lost because it's just, you're like, this is insane. It's awful, but it's, <laughs> it's good at the same time. <laughs> I yeah. said, we, we should have done it as a commentary just to get your reaction. Cause she was screaming at the screen. Oh man, that was insane. <laughs> Um, so what is your choice then for Coen Brother films? Well, I don't know. Maybe if I can lower this camera down here a little bit, mm. if you can see my shirt. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, nice. John Goodman. <laughs> we're doing. Walter. Yeah, we're doing the big Lebowski. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, so were there any other films in contention for you guys? I know you wanted to pick No Country first, um, but we already covered that. Yeah. Any other movies in contention for you? Fargo. I didn't realize that they did Fargo until I was looking into mm. the Coen brothers because yeah. I don't know all about That's them. That's a great one, yeah. I'm like, man, we've done that one. It's, yeah. it's really good. We already did that for, for an episode, but No Country is amazing. Um, the only other one I can think of that would maybe beat out all their others is Intolerable Cruelty. You, you heard of that? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> not at all. Yeah. That's George Clooney and kind of their like their only romantic comedy movie they did. So oh, no. didn't mm. do amazing. <laughs> but yeah, Fargo, or which is funny because this came out right after Fargo, and I think people were kind of confused by it. They mm. were like, "You follow Fargo up with this? Like we don't, we don't get it." <laughs> Fargo's great. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. So it's really funny and kind of pretty dark as well. Yeah, a buddy of mine who's older than I am was actually saw this Big Lebowski in theaters the, the opening day, and he was like, "My friend and I were the only ones there." Really? Yeah. I don't remember whether it was a big hit or not. I'm not sure. Not until it got to home video. Yeah, I can imagine. So what happens in the Big Lebowski, guys? Well, a character Jeffrey Lebowski, better known to his friends as the Dude. The best way I've heard this film described, unfortunately not by myself, but somebody said that it is a movie of a, a a movie that is trying to happen around a character that wants nothing to do with it. And I've always thought that's pretty yeah. funny. But yeah, it starts out someone, some two guys pee on his rug, thinking that he is a different Lebowski and setting him down this path and of confusion and not really understanding exactly what's really going on and trying to keep up. And his two friends, one a maniac, John Goodman, and a very meek, Steve Buscemi, try to help him along the way. Nice. Uh, So initial reactions, Shelley, what did you make of this one when you first saw it? (laughs) I honestly didn't love it. I know I'm going to be out. I'm going to be out on this. Don't hate me. Right. Um, I've already yelled at her. (laughs) Yeah, I... I Scott thought it, is not impressed. I thought it was good. <laughs> yeah, divorce papers are coming up. Uh, no, I thought it. I thought it was good, but honestly, 
it was just it was just okay for me did you prefer oh brother where art thou then i do yeah yeah i know okay but I, I, I got, like, I'm like, okay, we get it. Scott is just shaking his head yeah. the whole time. We, talking. <laughs> we get it. It's the dude. He's not Lebowski. Come on, get over it. Move on. <laughs> it, was, it happened a lot. I, well, yeah, I was trying to prep her for both movies where I'm like, these both are kind of just right. more like characters. Like, these are weird characters. The story may not make like a ton of sense at first or like, you know, that I think you're supposed to be just kind of confused as the dude is in some parts. But, you know, it's just the main thing is just watch these characters, how they act, how John Goodman is just insane at level 10 and everything. And you're just supposed to just laugh at the situations that they get in. And I get it. I understand. I know. I I was actually saying when I, <laughs> I first watched this as a kid when I worked at a theater – all the people there were talking about how funny it was and I didn't really get it at first. I'm like, I'm like, well, that, so there's not really like a mystery. I mean, like there, you're not really, not really supposed to understand some things, you know, mm. but if, I think, I don't know, maybe we need to watch it again and you kind of just sink into mm. it and kind of get the characters more. You're going to like hold my mm. eyes open and make <laughs> me watch it until I'm like, you love it. <laughs> yeah. I'll clockwork orange you. Yeah. I think the Coens were definitely going for this type of like, um, big sleep kind of film, mm-hmm. this kind of film noir. Um, but just, you know, putting their own very like stoner comedy, a twist on yeah. that. Um, because you know, the, the, the story in this is you know, is a little complicated at times. It definitely takes a few watches for, for at least for me to like fully understand what's going on. But I think that's what they're kind of going for. They, they want the Coens want these really oddball characters to just get completely caught up into this crazy uh, story that almost doesn't make sense, yeah. you know, <laughs> and that's where you get the comedy f- from. And this is my type of movie, you know, um, certainly the humor here is great very sweary but i quite like that in my comedy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um yeah i thought it was fantastic yeah i've seen this quite a few times yeah definitely the first time i watched it i didn't get it but i didn't care because i had such a great time anyway so i was like yeah i'll watch it again <laughs> to try and understand the story <laughs> why not it's it's kind of really fun anyway so yeah yeah um so directing then i wouldn't say there's too much like expressive directing from the coens in the beginning but you have this like brilliant surprise shot like a jump scare when those goons break into the dude's apartment and he comes right from behind the dude but you're like looking at the other asian guy hiding behind the dude in in shots so i thought that was clever then of course milk goes everywhere and toilet water <laughs> yeah. but i love the introduction to john toretto his surname is hard to say for me anyway john mm-hmm. uh Turturro's character jesus quintana like <laughs> the direction on him is really precise really stylized compared to our main characters where it's just like static cameras on them. I loved like the slow motion tracking shots on the dude <laughs> and what was reaction just saying, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> so yeah, I feel like the film is kind of, it's pretty standardly directed from the Coens, just letting the character shine. And then when the Jesus comes up on the screen, it's like, yeah, we're going to give this guy some real flair here. Yeah, I think the directing is spot on in this one. I love the opening too. I mean, you do have Sam Elliott narrating this movie, but the whole opening at the bowling alley and it's Bob Dylan is playing the song. But I yeah. love this the people that are bowling. It unfortunately these bowling alleys, I don't know if they exist. They at least here in, in America, they used to be pretty kind of kind of run down, just they smell the smoke yeah. completely and you just kinda feel that when you look at this place. But the one that always makes me laugh is when that guy strikes, it focuses just on his belly as he goes like back and forth. <laughs> that makes me laugh every time. But. Gosh, I thought it was well done. I don't know what to say about it, except that, um, take it over. For she me, she said it was great. She yeah. said it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like the second fantasy scene is just really weird with like, sexual innuendos Mm -hmm. (laughs) like i think jeff bridges is great dressed as a builder and julianne moore is more of this bowling viking woman (laughs) yeah it it was fun but i did think it was a bit inappropriate when like the dude is traveling down the alley the bowling alley like he's a bowling ball and then the lane is like 
lined with all these chorus girls and the dude is like going between their legs and he's like looking up their skirts i was like "Mm, this is a little dated now Mm, yeah it's disappointing because a lot of the humor around sexuality is like really funny in the dialogue so it was a tad frustrating that little bit but i feel like they could have come up with something a little better there but they bring it back with the nihilists, um, the German nihilists, uh, dressed in red spandex, holding giant scissors, yeah, chasing the dude. That was great. <laughs> Cutting off his Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you enjoy the fantasy scenes, Shelley? Hey, I'm James Lavino, and I'm here to tell you about Alternate Sides, a movie podcast with a twist. I've worked in the film business for two decades, but I haven't actually seen that many movies, and this has been driving my frequent collaborator, Sam, a self-confessed film snob, crazy. So every week, while he's stuck in his car trying to avoid getting a parking ticket, thanks to New York City's alternate side parking regulations, we discuss a classic film I've finally just gotten around to seeing, Alternate Sides, a new podcast about movies, parking, and a 25-year friendship, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, I thought the first one was neat, just uh, because I didn't expect it. I was like, oh, he's in like a little dreamland. Yeah, flying above the city. Yeah. And and then the next one, I I thought I was like, well, this is... This is weird. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> this, this one's weird, but I don't. I thought it played well. I love the second one. It makes me laugh. I mean, it's just yeah. when he walks out, he's in this like cavernous like room where like the ceilings or like the walls go so far up you can't even see it, and he looks so mm-hmm. tiny. I'm like, I wonder how they made that. That looks so interesting. And you got, of course, you know the. Uh, the first Iraq war is going on in the background where the timeline takes place. So he's seeing Saddam Hussein being like the shoe <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's right. That's right. It's just very interesting oh, too. Yeah. And kind of how they did it. So I, I really liked it. Mm. The first one's kind of like, Oh, he's just floating above the city. But I do like the second one where it all kind of just flows together. Cause he's just so drugged up from Jackie mm. Treehorn. Yeah, I, I mean, I do love Jeff Bridges like dancing down the steps. That was that was great. Um, and then dancing with Julianne Moore, that was a highlight. But I think my favorite uh, scene is actually the first fantasy scene sequence where the dude gets punched in the face, mm-hmm. and then the, and the next thing you see is like the dude flying over Los Angeles, following Julianne Moore on a flying carpet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Then it gets like, as I said in the first part, like then it gets. Uh, very Looney Tunesy, where he's suddenly got a bowling ball in his hand and plummets to the ground. And I love seeing like the dude, like really tiny, and he gets trapped in the bowling ball. And I loved how the shot just stays on the perspective of the of the bowling ball while it rolls. I found that was quite funny, quite disorientating, but in a good way though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was great for me. That shot of him in the bowling ball always makes me a little queasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in a good way. Though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a favorite scene then, Shelley? Oh, oh gosh, this is probably like a classic, but when they were getting rid of the um the remains. Donnie. Yeah, Donnie's remains. Oh, right, yeah. Like you don't think of the blowback, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I think what makes it so funny is just cuz you don't you don't feel the wind on the screen. Like mm. you just think it's just going to go down the cliff. It's just a really great visual gag that's so kind of unexpected, but, but just so funny. Yeah. And just how um, he just stays so still through like um, Jeff <laughs> yeah. Bridges is just like not moving. Like me, I'd be like, oh, oh, get out of my face. He's just so done. But yeah, he's just, he's tired. He needs a nap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's probably definitely one of my favorite scenes. I had that in acting. Yeah. I do kind of like uh, John Goodman in that as well, because mm. <laughs> with the dude, it all gets all the ash gets in his beard. Jeff Bridges is brilliant, just standing there, like, "Yeah, this is great, thanks, Walter." You know, <laughs> then John Goodman is great during the speech. For, you know, he's fairly emotional, mainly because he's thinking about Vietnam, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just making it funnier. Then he's genuinely apologetic to the dudes. And then when they both hug and say, fuck it, let's just go bowling. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a genuinely like nice moment between them. I, I thought it was a great way 
to like end their relationship in the film. That was a sweet moment, even though Donnie is all over them. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like the only <laughs> moment where John Goodman is not like an insane person. <laughs> yeah. He actually mm. kind of lets his guard down. <laughs> mm-hmm. Still a little insane, yeah. though, just talking yeah. about Nam and everything. And yeah. just like, it's still a little weird. Uh, have you got a favorite scene, Scott? There's so many in this, but I think the one that makes me laugh the most every single time is when he's driving in his car. And after yeah. he gets it back and he's drinking a beer, smoking a joint, listening to Creedence Clearwater. <laughs> And he flicks the joint. Of course, it goes in his lap and he tries to pour in the beer out. But like this impact of him hitting this dumpster just makes me laugh every time <laughs> when the car hits it. Yeah. Another car related one I kind of like. It's not actually that funny, but it's just because my dad loves the Eagles. He loves the Eagles. <laughs> mm-hmm. And when he's in the taxi and he's got the Eagles on and he's like, come on, man, I fucking hate the Eagles. <laughs> and I always point that out to my dad when... He's around, um, and I'm watching this film, um, which, of course, I did for this podcast yeah. and pointed out to him, like, here you go, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> like, who can hate the Eagles? That's awful. Yeah. Is that why you don't like this film, Shelley? You love it's the like, Eagles? That's just unacceptable yeah. to have a line like that in this film. Part of it. <laughs> Part of it was like, I love the Eagles. Burn in hell. What's, the song? <laughs> what's, your, what's your favorite song by them? Stop it. <laughs> Yeah, their big hit, Stop It. Yeah. No, uh, I I just, there's so many lines I repeat in here, yeah, where he's like, I've had a bad night and I hate the fucking Eagles, man. Yeah. <laughs> um. So directing score for me then, Um. yeah, I think it's it's pretty good. Maybe not as, like, pretty as Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, you know, certainly art direction-wise, like, Oh Brother wins that one, I think. Um, You know, I do really like the fantasy scenes, but I think just the visual comedy is is a bit dated now in the second one. So, you know, it's still pretty good, I would say. And also what the Coens do really well in both films is the fact that they don't do too much with the camera to, like, force the comedy through, especially Mm -hmm. in this one. They, They keep it very wide a lot of the time and just let... Jeff Bridges and John Goodman and Steve Buscemi just do their stuff. You know, there, there's some, you know, some things here and there um, that they really add some flair to, but it's not too much, I don't think, with the camera work, which I think is really great for me that they don't over push it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So I'll go like an 8.2. How about you guys? Yeah, I'd probably say like an 8.75 again on directing on this one here. I mean, I mean, there's some good stylized stuff, and we've seen Roger Deakins do so many great things with, you know, his cinematography. But this, this kind of just you're following people, and the real flourish moments are the dream sequences. But I think they they do a nice job. So I, I'd say about eight point seven five. How about you, Shelley? Are you knocking that down a bit? Shelley says the same thing. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> do you want to knock that down? No. I trust him in his okay. thoughts. <laughs> right. Screenplay then. I think the film makes it pretty clear from the get-go that this is a case of mistaken identity with the dude being robbed uh, when they think it's the wealthy Mr. Lebowski. And all the dude wants to do is just to see if he can get his rug replaced from the <laughs> Mr. Lebowski. Um, so the plot is is cut with these bowling scenes with a dude, Walter and Donnie, basically discussing the pissed on rug. <laughs> then you have like another development that Bunny has been kidnapped, um, Mr. Lebowski's trophy wife. And they discuss whether she kidnapped herself. And and again, you get this really funny scene with them bowling with the Jesus as they discuss the situation. So I loved how the film mixes these tones of like conspiracy thriller, almost like a film noir kind of feel to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, like a stoner comedy, (laughs) you know, you would think this wouldn't work, but it absolutely does. Like the pace isn't exactly fast either, but it's it's funny enough to keep you going. So I do kind of love the mix of tones here that this film is going for. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think kind of similar with Oh Brother that this movie, the screenplay is where it really shines again. There's so many funny lines Mm. and people um, when he's talking to the big Lebowski at the first the first time he sees him, he's like, so anytime a rug is micturated on, I need to replace it for any, for the purse, poor sap or however he words it. But I'm like, <laughs> micturated, that's a crazy word. And, and <laughs> the dialogue is so funny. Like 
they just repeat, mm. you know, re- sometimes repeat things back that other people have said. And I love Walter, like when they're talking in the bowling alley, he's like, that ru- that rug really tied the room together, did it not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I just love the fact that they make it a thing between Donnie and Walter. Like every single time Donnie tries to talk to Walter, Walter is like, shut the fuck up, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like he doesn't he, he they're supposed to be friends but like literally every time he speaks he says that i'm like that is that's hilarious <laughs> were you listening to the dude's story donnie you have no frame of reference you're like a child wandering into the middle of a movie <laughs> that's the only other different dialogue he says to him yeah everything else is just <laughs> fuck up donnie <laughs> Well, apparently in Fargo, you know, Steve Buscemi just talks like nonstop in that movie, fast talking gangster, and they yeah. kind of made it like this for him to, you know, as a joke. So every time he tries to say something or make a point, he's always like, shut the fuck up, Donnie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, when the dude gets himself into a right mess where, you know, Mr. Bl- Lebowski wants to kill him because they were sent a tow of, of bunnies. And the German nihilists want to cu- cut off his Johnson, <laughs> all because they lost the money as the car was stolen. Then at the bowling alley, the dude tells Walter to fuck to fuck the tournament. So Walter and Donnie leave, and then you get this great like in and out tracking shot on the dude. And Sam Elliott appears, who was the narrator voiceover at the very start, and he knows his name and says. Do you have? I'm not doing the voice. It's way too low. Yeah. Do you have to? Uh, do you have to say so many cuss words? So the film really gets into gear with its story at this real like low point for the dude, choosing between his life and his Johnson. You get this really surreal moment, which doesn't really add anything to the story, and it's not that it's not funny, but somehow it's it still kind of fits tonally and I, it feels like the coens are giving us a calm moment after all the craziness just to take a breath kind of thing yeah but then you're like hang on what the fuck <laughs> he's the narrator <laughs> he's not supposed to be in the movie <laughs> <laughs> so i get it's it is a really weird moment and again like the coens are kind of adding like a fantastical element here like out of the blue yeah what, what did you make of th- that scene scott because, like, for me, like, you could literally take that scene out and it wouldn't change the film at all. Yeah. You can maybe say that about a lot of the scenes in the film, but especially that one. I'm not really sure why Sam Elliott kind of shows up. I, I guess they're they're maybe making a play on, like, these old kind of film noir detective movies because they'd always be like, oh, the dame walked in and I'd never seen her before, you know. But now we've got this guy narrating and he's kind of like just this weird cowboy who... He's not even like mm. he was told this story because he was like, he's like, well, it made me laugh to beat the brand, you know, as he says at the end. So it's just kind of this weird. Yeah, like he's almost kind of like you mentioned, I didn't think of it before, but like the moment of calm for the dude, because like at the very end, he shows up again and it's like, well, I guess everything's going to be OK. You know, a little Lebowski's mm. on the way. <laughs> yeah, I think it's for his mustache. True. Like that's really he's just got a beautiful mustache, and that's that's <laughs> that's really the only reason why Sam Sam Elliott is is in this movie. I think. Yeah, I can see it. You become calm through watching his mustache. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the longer his mustache, the the deeper his voice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, did that scene work for you, Shelley, or were you just like, what is going on? I don't understand. <laughs> I thought it was weird at first, but then at the end. I'm just like, oh, is he supposed to be like God? Like he's the voice yeah. of, of God uh, and he knows what's happening and he's just, that's why he's narrating. That's when it fell into place for me. But at first I was like, what in the world? I think also it kind of works like tonally because you've had these two, I think we've had two of elite, well, at least one of the fantasy scenes already. So you're like, okay, you know, if we didn't have any of that fantasy stuff, then maybe it would feel very strange. Um, but but because we've had one already, then it's that a uh, little bit more passable mm. for me. But yeah, I, I enjoyed it, but like I don't know why it's there, <laughs> other than to give the 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 dude a bit of a breather. Do you watch the Fargo TV show? I've seen the first few seasons. Yeah, 
a long time ago. Yeah, season three has a moment where a character goes into the bowling alley, and it's like that shot with Sam Elliott, kind of like an homage to the whole... There's not a cowboy there, but he's just sitting at the bar, and it's shot exactly the same way. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. And then, like, after you have this brilliant scene where they think this kid stole the money and Walter trashes the wrong sports car... (laughs) Uh, then I think the film starts to drag a little bit from the next 20 minutes for the next 20 minutes. Like the dude meets Jackie Treehorn, like the Malibu police officer. He has sex with Maud. Then John Polito shows up, the other PI. But for me, I think it's because John Goodman goes missing for like 20 minutes. Uh, you know, when he comes back to the film, like it really picks up again. Uh, when they figure out the truth that Mr. Lebowski had no money of his own, like he stole money from the family charity fund, kept the million dollars for himself, and the briefcase was empty, Mr. Lebowski was hoping that if Bunny was killed, he could pin it on the dude, you know, a bum, as he calls him. Yeah. I quite like the fact that it's not that dramatic in the reveal. It's quite casual, and it fits, again, with this like stoner stoner comedy tone, and the dramatic stuff is how, like, Walter reacts to it. Like, in the van, Walter's like, what's this got to do with an emergency? <laughs> <laughs> it's the day of Shabbos! <laughs> <That's right. laughs> the reaction from John Goodman when the dude says he's not even Jewish is priceless. You know, when they confront Mr. Lebowski about the truth again, it's not that dramatic. But when... Walter accuses Mr. Lebowski that he's not disabled. It becomes really dramatic and funny when he lifts him up and drops him to the ground. Like the movie is just so much better when John Goodman is on screen for me. Yeah. So that was slightly disappointing that you you know that there is a bit of a lull in the uh, in the film for me. Do you agree with that? Or because I, I I mean that might be just be personal taste for me because I think John Goodman just has such an impact in this movie that you kind of want him in every scene that the dude is in, you know. I agree with John Goodman. He's like a force of nature in this movie. Yeah. Shelley says there's no lulls in this movie that's whatsoever. But I think... Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, what do you think? I didn't notice, to be honest. I didn't I didn't oh, right. okay. I didn't notice a lull. I mean, I can see that, but it didn't really affect me any, really. I think okay. the the weaker parts of this movie, which is just a minor gripe of mine, is Julianne Moore. Right. And I mean, she's very funny and her accent is so funny mm-hmm. doing that mid Atlantic, but like the scene where he's there talking mm-hmm. to her and he's got Knox Harrington, the video artist, with her. It's just a very weird kind of <laughs> strange yeah. scene. But um, Oh, what's the actor called? David Thulis, who's actually in Fargo season three. Yeah. David Thulis. Yeah. I can see that, yeah, because you're just like, yeah, I we, we kind of want to go back to it here. But I, I definitely find those scenes just more weird. But it also does make me laugh because it's just the part where, like, the dude is in this whole – he's out of his – well, as as Walter says, he's out of his element because these are people that he has no connection to or, like, a society that he has no idea about. So it is kind of funny to see mm-hmm. him react. He does say to David Thewlis' character, he's like, uh, he's got a cleft asshole, which I'm like, what does that mean? Oh, <laughs> I guess I missed that. That's woo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I do not want to see that. No. Um, I know what that is. Really. His, yeah. His, I had to finally look it up. But his insult, he calls the Big Lebowski a human paraquat, which a paraquat is like <laughs> a, a liquid that damages the lining of your stomach. Mouth. It's basically just a poisonous mm. type of liquid. So he calls him like a human poisonous liquid. Right. <laughs> i think that's a bit harsh I th- a white russian is quite nice i like i like a white russian oh <laughs> i bet the sales talking about dapper dan i can only imagine yeah. the sales of white russian oh my gosh have you had yeah. <laughs> no but i like kalua he uses powdered milk for one in a in that same scene where he's talking oh. to knox harrington he uses powdered milk for his white russian i'm not sure about that yeah that sounds disgusting <laughs> yeah we i've had a white russian before it's pretty good and yeah. then they also make the black russians mm. i'm not sure that I, I don't think i don't know if they use kalua but mm. white russians are pretty good yeah what what do you think then guys about like like how i felt with like the reveals of of what was going on in this story that they were kind of like casually done but like you get the real tension and hilarity from Jod goodman you know when he's in the van saying why is this an emergency and then 
you know when they when they find out what happens to uh, what really happened confronting mr lebowski like again not that dramatic but then goodman's like yeah this guy is faking did you get that same feeling that they were actually kind of really on purpose underplaying the plot reveals here but just kind of focusing on the character moments I would agree. Yeah, in my opinion, it's almost as if the story really doesn't matter because the dude yeah, is yeah. always seems to be a step behind or even more. Mm. And it's like this big moment where the dude in that scene in the in the van where Walter has picked him up, it's a huge moment like where any other movie it would be the big aha moment where like this guy yeah. kidnapped his or he had his own wife kidnapped or like you know or you know whatever movie we would be watching, but it's so funny he's going over, he's finally thinks he's figured everything out and Walter is just like who cares? Like I'm not supposed to be driving. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's Jabez. Yeah, I think the the funnier moments come from the the definitely the reactions because it's like it just makes me think of that quote I read where it's like a movie is happening here and a lot of these people don't even really care. Yeah, I do feel like it is very much done on purpose. That as you said, Scott, like the story doesn't kind of matter here. It, it's fun and it does work, but that's kind of secondary to what's actually going on with what the characters are doing, all the character work, which I really, really appreciate. Almost, almost parodying, almost spoofing like the film noir genre in a way, you know, neo noir genre. Yeah. Have you seen Burn After Reading? Yeah. Not for a long time. <laughs> yeah, same. I really – I thought it was pretty funny. Another George Clooney movie there. But yeah. I thought it was pretty funny because at the end, after all this craziness happens, that FBI agent's like, well, what did we learn from this? And the other guy's like, I don't know. <laughs> they don't know what happened. And I kind of get that sense in this movie too. They're like, what really happened here? I'm like, I I don't know. I think maybe that's why I didn't like it so much because <laughs> I am I am right. all about the story. Like I want I want to know more yeah. about the story, which – because I was like, okay, at first, her kidnapping herself totally makes sense. She's she's a yeah. gold digger. <laughs> and then when it flipped around that it was actually he doesn't even have any money and he was hoping she would get killed. I was like, whoa, oh, my goodness. And, but then I didn't have any time to be like, whoa, because they're like moving yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> I should have broke it to you like that. I'd be like, you're going to be so invested <laughs> in this kidnapping. But don't worry about yeah. it. <laughs> um, so funny and interesting lines, people. There's so many <laughs> for me. Yeah, I know. A ton. But sometimes there's a man. Sometimes there's a man. Well, I lost my train of thought here. <laughs> but ah, hell, I done introduced him enough. <laughs> yeah. From Sam Elliott. Yeah. The characters are so funny. Like, I, yeah, of course, it's been memed and stuff. But the whole confrontation with the over the line market zero. I just love how he, oh, yeah. <laughs> he pulls the gun on him and at the end of he's putting it away, he's like, it's a league yeah. game, Smokey. Yeah. <laughs> I had to do it. I had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> pacifism. They talk about pacifism as they're walking out that night when the cops are in the background running into the bowling alley. And he's like, they're pacifists, man. He's like, really? I did not know that. He's like, I too dabbled <laughs> in pacifism. Not in Nam, of course. Yeah, gotta bring that up. Um, the blonde's treehorn thug is holding the dude's bowling ball near the star, and he says, "What the heck is this? Obviously, you're not a golfer." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> is being prepared to do the right thing, ever the cost? Isn't that what makes a man? Sure, that and a pair of testicles. <laughs> <laughs> I love that part too because he's reading the wanted or the ransom letter, and he's just like, "Yeah, that's a bummer, man. That's a real bummer." <laughs> 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 or he's like, you mind if I do a J? And he starts just smoking weed while that guy is crying <laughs> in the corner. Strong yeah. men also cry. <laughs> oh, God. Liam and me, we're going to fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> I do actually quote that a lot sometimes um, when I'm having conversations with people. <laughs> I'm like, If I don't agree with it, I'm like... Yeah, well, you know, that's just your opinion, man. I like that one. <laughs> the only other thing I can think of is that they keep saying they're going to cut somebody's dick off. Yeah. That happens a lot. <laughs> like, I'm really worried about somebody losing their dick in this movie. Uh, and even he says it to little Larry, too, when he's like, they're going to cut your dick off, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, everybody is in threatened by this. But most importantly, he does it in a German gay accent. And tomorrow we come back and cut off your Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I love uh, John Goodman where they're talking about the toe, and he's like, "I'll get you a toe. I can get you a toe by three thirty. Toenail with, <laughs> with uh, paint to toenail finish on it." I'm like, "How? <laughs> really?" He's yeah. like, "You don't want to know." You know, that's that's the beauty of this film. I I wouldn't mind literally seeing that scene in this movie, like seeing John Goodman. We just stay with John Goodman for a bit and just try and get. <laughs> see if he can get a toe yeah. with 330 or whatever <laughs> and it would work it would totally work for me <laughs> um, he's probably got a guy i bet he has a guy that he can go and get a toe yeah <laughs> probably somebody in nam <laughs> jesus you said it man nobody fucks with the jesus <laughs> I, his that always makes me laugh his last scene there where he does yeah. his little hip thrust Oh my god. It's like you got a day Wednesday, baby. Woo <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where are you going, dude? I'm going home, Donnie. Phone's ringing, dude. Thank you, Donnie. <laughs> I love uh how come you board how come you just don't board that dog? And he's like, first off, it's a show dog. You can't board it. It's got papers. It's hair it gets stressed. Its hair will fall out. <laughs> I did like that one. That was funny. There's some quite interesting ones from Julianne Moore, like, My art has been commended as being strongly vaginal, which bothers some men. The word itself makes some men uncomfortable. Vagina. She just said, vagina. (laughs) (laughs) There was a lot of vagina talk from her. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I think one of the best ones from, from a repeated one from John Goodman is when he's trashing the sports car by mistake and he says son this is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass <laughs> that was so funny Which, he says that so many times it's so funny yeah, at least. yeah you can find it on youtube but the edited for tv version of that is uh oh find a stranger in the alps in the alps <laughs> Find a stranger. Find a stranger. Is- yeah, so I think funny. another one is this is what happens when you feed a stranger scrambled eggs. <laughs> <laughs> you can really put a lot of stuff. Oh, God. I wish I watched that version now. <laughs> <laughs> you can really put anything with that. Uh, yeah. That is so funny. <laughs> uh, um, but I think my favorite, which is kind of. I think it's my favorite because it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, it's when <laughs> I think they're in the bowling alley again and the dude and Donnie are talking. I oh, know du- the dude and Walter is talking and he says, I don't need your fucking sympathy, man. I need my fucking Johnson. And then Donnie says, what do you need that for, dude? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, what? <laughs> it's just really bizarre. It's so funny. I, <laughs> I don't know why, but it always repeats in my head sometimes where he's always like, just stay away from my fucking lady friend, man. Yeah. Have you got a favorite, Scott and Shelley? Oh, geez. Or was that too hard? <laughs> Scott's favorite is my favorite. We'll go for it. No, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to I didn't catch a long, I didn't catch her, catch the joke. Um. Probably just the the scene at the beginning with Walter, I, I'm or anything Walter says, really. I just love where he's like, yeah. Uh, no, probably one of my the ones that made me laugh hardest this time though was when the big Lebowski is like, "Well, my story is you stole the money," and he's like, "As if we ever would dream of stealing your money." <laughs> <laughs> no, not us. Or even that scene where he's like, "I've seen a lot of spinals, man. This dude fucking walks." <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty shocking. Yeah, that's great. Him, li- him yeah. <laughs> picking him up. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like you have that's straight after the reveal of of you finding out what actually happened, and yet your focus isn't on that. It's on uh, John Goodman <laughs> picking the dude up and dropping. Him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So screenplay score for me, I'm gonna go pretty high to be honest, because I just love these mixes of tones that the Coens go with here. This stoner comedy mixing with a kind of a a piss take on like neo noir detective stories and it's just hilarious this is my type of humor man yeah um so i'm gonna go like a 9.3 for me Mm. i think it's really good i'll have to say 9.5 it it just makes me laugh so hard it has such a funny such dialogue and you go back and watch it again and you'll pick up more so it just i i would really rate it a nine and a half you agree with that (laughs) shelly yeah or should it come down a bit (laughs) 
I mean, personally, I'd probably do more of an eight, but mm-hmm. but I, I, you don't know. We that's it. No, it's your it's your rating. No, it's okay. We can only have one rating, so nine point five. Okay. Okay, nine and a half. It is acting. Then I loved Philip Seymour Hoffman in this film. Oh my gosh, he's yeah. like the most English American I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> like he has this amazing em- embarrassment laughter. I love the part where he where we see Bunny for the first time, played by Tara Reid, and she asks the dude. I'll suck your cock for a thousand dollars. His face <laughs> and Hoffman and Hoffman's shoulders like shoot up. You know, laughs through gritted teeth is so great. <sighs> Ooh, yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> I love his face there. I absolutely love um, John Turturro as Jesus Contana, as you've probably gathered already. When he's like preparing to bowl, he kisses the ball, which is disgusting. After he yeah. like bowls a strike, he does this weird dance in slow mo, like stepping backwards. And I love the fact that his friend Liam is just this normal, plump, short haired guy. <laughs> like, you're like, how the hell do these people know each other? <laughs> yeah, I would love to know. And I kind of like the fact that he's not actually in it that much. Because I think if if he was in it more, like I think we would be way too overwhelmed in this film. You're like, whoa, okay, this is too much. Because there's a lot of crazy stuff going on with the acting anyway. So I think just having like a couple of scenes with him is kind of perfect. Actually. Well, if you wanted to ruin that, you can watch the okay. sequel, <laughs> I guess. It's The Jesus Rolls, directed by John Turturro. Oh. I have not seen it. I have heard bad things. It's apparently okay. a remake of a French film. But from what I understand, yeah, all the hits that he does in this movie, he does it in the second one as well. Which are not many, but... <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. He's not in there very often. Yeah, licking the ball, mm. pull the trigger until it goes click. Yeah, it's apparently all in there. But it's like, a, it's not even about bowling. They go on like a crime spree. He gets out of prison. So, uh, Did you like um, Jesus Quintana, Shelley? I did. I like. I wish he was in it a little more. Just, okay. just because he's just such a funny guy. He's just I think it's because he's so weird. <laughs> like it, <he's, laughs> like you don't expect anybody to act like that, and then he just does it, and you're like, "Wow, that's that's crazy. That's hilarious." But yeah, I just felt like he was just in it like a few scenes. It seems like, yeah. and then he was gone. Keep him wanting more. So that, would this film improve a lot if if he was in it more for you? Then maybe, maybe <laughs> you'd be one of the only people that likes the sequel. I don't know. <laughs> because <laughs> it has him in it all the time no i don't know we watched the trailer and it didn't look that great <laughs> oh, okay well i think the consensus is is that you know we have both said it we were kind of didn't like it or we're like oh that's kind of strange the first time we watched it so you need to watch it more no oh, i okay yeah right. i'm up for trying it again you guys made some good points <laughs> well i i wasn't giving you an option Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we're watching it again <laughs> and again and again when we're done here yeah. we're gonna watch it again okay <laughs> that's great uh, i loved jack colia i think is how you pronounce his name is incredibly funny as this really shy scaredy cat landlord oh, yes. oh yeah who performs this incredibly awkward and funny dance number in silhouette uh in like this green leotard thing like i could not stop laughing with how clunky his dance moves were (laughs) then i was kind of bummed that his name is mine so that's two episodes in a row where a weird guy is called mine thanks guys but there we go oh no (laughs) because barry keoghan in in um the killing of a sacred deer is called martin oh geez (sighs) okay Well, you're named after, uh, well, I mean, another Martin. Some weirdos, yeah. Martin Riggs from Lethal Weapon that I can think of. Yeah, oh, that's that's better, I guess. <laughs> Marty McFly. Unfortunately played by Mel Gibson, but oh well. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why I was like, Marty McFly, if you're going to do a nickname. No one calls me Marty, but yeah. okay. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Martin Scorsese. There you go, yeah. Uh, Uh, i love that whole scene at the theater because i always assumed that walter showed up like in a suit and tie for this performance but i think it's just because they're gonna go see the guy he's like he wrote (laughs) branded bulk of the series (laughs) john goodman is absolutely hilarious in this Mm. film i would say i just love all these moments where he just is is just shouting in fits of rage 
Yeah, I kind of really like the um the scene in the cafe where the dude and and Walter are arguing. <laughs> And like the the waitress comes over and says, "Can you keep it down, please?" <laughs> he goes on a whole thing about Vietnam again, and then like the dude's like, "Oh, for God's sake!" and then just yeah. leaves. And then Walter's just he doesn't like carry on with the rage stuff. He's just like, "No, I'm enjoying my coffee. I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy my coffee. I'm staying." <laughs> He's probably used to it. It seems to be his thing. Yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of cool though that and funny that he's just. Tr- really trying to control his rage you know um it's just like yep i'm drinking my coffee (laughs) yeah it's i'm not gonna shout anymore i'm really trying hard to not shout (laughs) he's great he's he's absolutely great and if comedy has got any kind of oscar love he might have been nominated i would think but he's so funny Mm. uh flea and the nihilist we think we've touched upon them flea from the chili peppers (laughs) and the nihilist are so funny i think it's just because you like the red hot chili peppers (laughs) oh yeah yeah, they're they're just so ridiculous. You know the scene when they go into the into the dude's house and they just drop a ferret in his bath. Yeah, <laughs> is kind of hilarious as well. And the fight they have is really kind of great as well. Kind of again, it has a little bit of a cartoony quality mm-hmm. where like Goodman just like launches the bowling ball into one of the guy's stomachs. <laughs> but then off screen, you have. Donnie just has a heart attack and it's just like oh shit yeah. you know it kind of has again it has a little bit of kind of heart there and just like oh sh- shit you know yeah. and a, a slight emotional moment even though he's qu- a fairly minor character at the three but yeah I, I think it kind of works really well you know with with Steve Buscemi like being the quiet guy mm-hmm. because I think the, you know the gag wouldn't work at all with yeah. the, you know the whole shut the fuck up Donnie because usually he's he's more of a larger than life character like goodman and jeff bridges what do we make of jeff bridges in this movie as well i think he's he's pretty awesome to be honest and just works really well with goodman even though you you kind of doubt like how are these guys friends sometimes yeah (laughs) i don't know how much of acting it was for jeff bridges he seems kind of a laid-back cool dude yeah but i think he's great he's really funny in this i love the scene where he's talking to the big lebowski and he's like you go out looking like that for a job on a weekday Mm -hmm. sir he's like what day is it? It's just <laughs> he's he's so funny too. His his confusion at everything and thinking that he has some things mm. figured out. It, I think he's great in this too. Yeah, I just kind of love this kind of like this attitude he has, this very laid back attitude. Yes, he has some kind of really angry moments, like with John Polito. It's like, leave my lady friend alone, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, and with the taxi driver. Certainly that's later on in the movie where he's very much invested in, in what's going on. Um, but I just kind of like this whole blag blagging attitude he's got, like pretending he's kind of like knows everything, mm-hmm. but just really just tries to talk his way through situations. Yeah. <laughs> um, even though you definitely get a sense that, yeah, he doesn't know much at all. <laughs> he just wants his carpet and bowl. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I thought he was good. I I just wish he would, like, wash his clothes. That's it. <laughs> it, it really bothered me because I'm like, they are all dirty. Like, they are, mm. they are gross. And that kind of thing. I, yeah. I don't know. That just stuck out at me. It was a sore thumb. It's just like, it's dirty. Like, you can see how dirty it is. And it just <laughs> needs to be cleaned. Mm. But, yeah, that bothered you a bit. And it, when he gets his face thrown in the toilet, she was like, uh, oh, that toilet. <laughs> that toilet was nasty i mean it was like a a single guy's toilet i totally get it (laughs) i i i understand it but it was disgusting (laughs) yeah there there are occasions where he's like yeah i know this is strange um like right at the beginning when like he's writing a check for 69 cents or something for a carton of milk and he gives that gives a look to the cashier like yeah i know <laughs> i did that i, I was for, like that's scott really <laughs> not for milk and i think it was more than a dollar but when wow. i first got checks when i was a teenager i wrote a check for a bottle of water and this scene popped in my mind i was like i'm just exactly wow. like the dude when we first got <laughs> when we first got together, he used his debit card for everything, and I still had cash. I'm like, if it's only a couple of dollars, I'm just gonna pay cash. But he was all like, swipe, swipe my card, and I'm like, what? <laughs> but now that's all you do. I mean, yeah, that's normal yeah. now. He just, I just wasn't there yet. I was ahead of the time. Yeah. <laughs> um. So 
Shelley, favorite performance for you? Mm. You said you kind of said you like John Turturro already, right? Or yeah, I don't know that I liked his. I mean, I liked him, but I don't know that the, the performance stuck out. I think the car smashing the car was fun. So is um, it John Goodman's performance? Yes. Yeah, I, I I did like John Goodman the best for sure. I did. I also liked when um, Maud. Yeah, Julianne Moore. Yeah. yeah, when she flew in. Like to like when uh, Jeff Bridges was there to meet her, and she like flew in and like did this yeah. did this weird painting thing. Yeah. I, I thought that just showed how far out she was. Like she was just so sophisticated mm. that she's doing these. Well, she's very high up. Yeah, yeah doing these <laughs> literally, <laughs> <laughs> but doing these yeah. off the wall things. Um, I thought that brought her character. And she's naked as well. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. weird. You have to be naked while you paint. <laughs> okay. I mean, easy cleanup, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it, it kind of um, the Cohen's like flair aspect comes in, in there in that scene where, you know, she kind of seems to come out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Like earlier when Jackie Treehorn and the Schoons break into the dude's apartment for the first time, kind of similar way it's shot there. But yeah, you, you get immediately how weird and wacky Julianne Moore's character is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, John, uh, John, Scott, yes. no. favorite performance? <laughs> Preempting your favorite performance. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how could it be any other? I mean, everybody does a great job in this, but man, John Goodman is just insane. He's mm. so funny. And that most of the scenes, I mean, you do quote move like the dude's lines and stuff, but everybody loves like the over the line and you know that whole sequence where he pulls a gun and you know he, he <laughs> yeah he, he's amazing i think he was the he's definitely just that's an amazing part and he just does it mm. all the way like a hundred percent yeah i'm going john goodman as well um yeah it's just so funny right acting score for me yeah i think i'm gonna go i'm gonna go pretty high to be honest i think Everyone is is pretty funny, even like the German nihilists. I, you know, very weird, but again, very funny. I love the accent that they get with there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Peter Stormore is is in there. Another Cohen regular is mm-hmm. one of the nihilists. Yeah, so I'm going to go like a straight nine for me because again, I think doing comedy acting is hard. I think it's very underrated. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I do like the acting. I thought everybody did like a superb job. Like, I don't think there was anyone that was all like, ooh, I would do nine. Fair enough. Nine yeah. as well? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nine yeah. as well. Cool. Do you ever get people to say a 10? Like a straight 10? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had a, f- a 10 in our heist films episode. All right. Hmm. Um, when we were talking about Heat. Oh, gosh. We did that for the podcast, too. <laughs> That's an amazing movie. Oh, did you? Mm, yeah, yeah, I do I love, love that. That. Mm-hmm. that is tied as number one at the moment with uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Mm. <laughs> nice. Uh, right, let's add up the scores then for The Big Lebowski. The Big Lebowski gets 53.7. Whoa. So The Big Lebowski wins this episode as Oh Brother Where Art Thou only got 49.7. So, yeah, my losing streak continues. <laughs> I need to step up my game, people. <laughs> you beat us pretty bad the last time we were on, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, next episode, we are going to focus on a Legends episode. So what that means is we focus on a legend of cinema who have either sadly passed away or have had a really long career or have now retired. Um, so our guests have picked Rob Reiner. So we're going to have a look at his films. And those guests are from the Movie Gap podcast. So yeah, that should be a very exciting one. Yeah, And they've already picked their film. I'll give you a little clue. It is related to where I am from. <laughs> now Scott is racking his brain. <laughs> yeah, like, don't guess because he'll probably be right. <laughs> Uh, don't yeah. ruin it yeah okay <laughs> guys you have been absolutely amazing it's been lovely having you guys on the podcast again this is your opportunity again to tell us about your podcast and where can we find you yeah thank you so much for having us back again it's been so fun um we are the film obsessed couple we're a married couple obsessed about movies 
So if you're interested in movies, it, like if you're listening to this podcast, you're interested. You must be. <laughs> Check us out. You can find us anywhere that you stream a podcast, and we would we'd appreciate it very much. Yeah, hint for the next time we do our uh, next episode we will be doing is Short Circuit. So uh, nice. Shelley, I'm looking forward to that. Shelly picked that one. She's Look at me. <laughs> Johnny Five. <laughs> uh, yeah, I push her. I'm like, I'm like, hey, come up with some, you know, pick something that you want to watch. Because I'm like, I'm always like, let's watch terrible movies and make fun of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's altered states. Some people really don't like that one. If you want to watch, <laughs> try and no, but... destroy that one, Shelley. <laughs> yeah, there's always something. <laughs> Please don't. Um, <laughs> it was painful last time. Um... <laughs> this one goes out to Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Sung by John uh, William Hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, it's time to say goodbye. So, it's goodbye from Shelley. Bye bye. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from Scott. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. I'm going to avoid gay German nihilists at all costs. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> nice. I will cut off your chance and shut the fuck up, Danny. That's it for part two. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed it. Check out part one if you haven't done so already. But don't stop there. Get involved and tell us what your favourite films are relating to the episodes. Send us a DM or comment on Instagram and TikTok at Film vs Film Podcast for Twitter at FVF underscore podcast. If you do, we'll give you a shout out on the next episode. If you're feeling really generous, you can buy us a one-off coffee at our Buy Me A Coffee account. Remember... Please leave us a five-star review and subscribe. Pod signing off.